Well, you'll just be able to you'll be able to hear us better. As long as you Will your sound fuck with the recording if it's coming through my phone? No, I don't like I don't hear any echo or anything. As long okay, as you can hear us okay. I don't have headphones. Okay. No, the bullshit that I've been dealing with is all work related this <laughs> entire fucking day. Well, we're so streaming, I so <laughs> yeah, we're streaming oh. already. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go over and hit record. <laughs> okay. All right, Dave, you tweeting out? Yeah. Is this is this a cool view? Can you all see the volcano and stuff behind me? Uh, yeah. Only when you talk, so you just have to. Okay. Talk. You just go. Uh. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we recording? What's taking so long? Uh, he had to go over to the uh, computer and hit record. Yeah. Where are you in your room? Yeah. Oh, I oh you're at your window. Okay. I I thought I'm like standing it's hard in the to, middle of Orlando. I just yeah, <laughs> I thought like you were in the lobby or something. It's hard to tell tell scale. Like that thing is way over there. I thought that maybe it was a small volcano and it was much closer. Yeah, this is my hotel room. Can you see it? <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah, I, I, it it must have been a really long walk from from the lobby to your hotel room, huh? It took like well, an hour. <laughs> It, listen, listen, there are, this place is huge. There are like four parking garages. There are, there were so few parking spaces. This place is huge. What is it? Is it one of the Disney resorts? Or, no, you're going to Universal. It's Universal Cabana Bay Resort. Mm. Where we can see it from here. And get this, all right? I went to high school with a guy. I was in Singers with him. I get into my room. He's on my TV. What? He's like sitting on your TV. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> How did he get in the room in the first place? <laughs> first of all, I let's haven't... let's. Start. Are you sitting cross-legged on top of your TV? <laughs> I haven't seen this guy in like ten years, and he's on my TV in my hotel room. Let me guess. He's a weatherman. No, he's he works here. He works at this hotel. <laughs> Wait, how did how did he get on the TV if he just works at a hotel? And he's just like he's just telling you about the amenities. Is that what it is? It's a video like that. <laughs> it's like <laughs> welcome to our hotel. Yeah, you'll find a to pool, left, a spa, a, a room, some left, beds, a handy laminated <laughs> list of all of the TV channels you have. Yeah. No, it's more of just like a little advertisement for the hotel. It's showing videos of the pool and the different, the bowling alley and the different stuff they have here. And it showed him at the front desk being all smiley and stuff. It was just really, really weird wow. to see. Wait, yeah, yeah. You went to high school in Tennessee? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. I went to high school with this guy home. And I am in Orlando, Florida, and he works in this hotel. Dear it's weird, God. huh? Dear, I, hope, okay. I, I gotta, I gotta rethink my religious views. There's, there's gotta be something <laughs> okay. going on. Hey, yeah. I got. Okay, if if you want some more material for that, when I worked at the hotel in in at home on the the Marriott Hotel, I checked in a guest that I went to middle school with in Indiana. Oh God! Whoa. That's so weird. <laughs> hadn't I hadn't seen him for ten years? Yeah, What's going on here? It's with know. hotels and people traveling to different places and running into each other. But yeah. like, there's a million hotels, and <laughs> I worked at that one, and they stayed at that one. It, the, it's it, weird. It is. Uh, it's unfounded. It it's is, what God. And what God wants. So what's going on? What's going on there? Look where I am. There's a volcano. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just noticed that. There's a volcano back there. It's live. I hope that everything works out okay, because. Right now, it's spewing out teal smoke. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, that's uh, uh, manganese. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to hurt me. Uh, well, small doses. I mean, yeah, they wouldn't breathe in too much of that. Okay. Well, my, my, my life the past since last night, I don't know. 
it's been a depressing slow day but yesterday last night was it was weird kind of went to a, a crazy show a little bit it wasn't many people there but the bands were it was fun it's just i think both brian and patrick kind of hate me now after that because <laughs> so like, here's what happened brian got so he usually has sunday off so he 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 worked sunday so he could get last night off to go see this band that nobody really wanted to see we just i i just wanted to go to the show and i said hey does anybody want to go to this yeah. okay well we'll pick one green jelly we'll go see green jelly and oh that's what that meant <laughs> Yeah, you, you, it was like I'm drunk. Green jelly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Hey, you guys want to test out this Google Hangout thing?" And and Nathan just replied, "I'm drunk. Green jelly." <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm like, nope. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and so so Brian does that, and that yesterday he finds out that one of his absolute favorite bands just randomly is doing a show Sunday that wasn't announced beforehand. Mm -hmm. So he has to work that night. So he's missing that. And it turns out he hated the, apparently he really hated yesterday. They left early. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> it's Cause I was with the show. Cause they had like three openers. And when green jelly finally got on stage, I was just the only one there. And I'm like, look around. I was like, where, where, where did everybody go? I did think it looked a little bare, but it is a big room. So it's, you know, it's hard to fill that place out, but it, yeah, it looked, it did look. Bare. Oh yeah. That place never gets packed. Yeah. I've never seen that side of it packed over there, but I saw it packed one time, and it was for local heroes copper, but that was years ago. Yeah, and then Patrick apparently got so wrecked that he's not even here tonight. <laughs> yeah. So I'm here from Orlando, right? So Patrick can't even be on the podcast. Well, I'm sure he's watching oh, the stream. Just, people. just you know, you could just uh, whatever you want to say to Patrick, because I'm sure he's watching. Uh huh. <laughs> Patrick. Sack up, you pussy. <laughs> Pack up, you sussy. <laughs> There's the episode name. How does a pussy sack up? <laughs> well, let me show you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, this is Verbal Salt. My name is Nathan Eckel. This is a podcast. We are on Mixer, right? Aren't we on Mixer? Yeah, is that we are now on? officially on Mixer. I'm going to get my, I'll, you try to get my enthusiasm boosted up. Hey, we're on Mixer. <laughs> hey. Podcast. Welcome to Mixer. <laughs> Steve Moore, you got us on Mixer. Yes, we we did it. We we tried to do the co-stream thing so Dave could have his phone pointed at his face because all of his followers just they, they they need a direct feed of just Crosstown Beano. Yeah. If, straight up the nose. They, just like they, they're they're okay with all this shit, you know, kind of all the peripheral shit, but they really want to see that zoomed in, that nice tight shot. Kind of like what we have of Becca. They wanted that of Dave. How yeah. zoomed in am I? Am I pretty zoomed in? I mean it's just <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> it's normal. You know, you're I, you're holding your phone at a normal distance. Yeah, it's going to suck to hold this for the next hour and a half, but I'll deal with it. Unlike Patrick, who won't deal with it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so Becca Penlin, you you just arrived in Florida not too long ago. How are you feeling? Coming at you live from the volcano in Orlando. I'm going to show it to you again. Big bluish purple. There it is. Volcano. I'm having a great time so far. Uh, our plane took off 15 minutes early, which is unheard of. Uh... It seemed like a shorter flight than usual. I guess they were going a little bit faster. Was it Allegiant? <laughs> <laughs> well, they can do that. They they do do that sometimes. Like if they need to make up time. Go faster than usual. Yeah. I huh? mean, you know, how do you think they make up for delays? If you got a tailwind, yeah. you go yeah. faster too. Oh, does the hurricane give them a tailwind? Or maybe they got behind a, a bird V and picked up the, the, the wind draft. from there. <laughs> Picking up, the, they're drafting on birds. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't planes just do that? Why don't they just form Vs? Get like in birds? a line. <laughs> yeah. Why oh, don't they do man. They could learn a thing or two from Dale Earnhardt. We learned something from nature. Oh. Do it like the ducks do. Dave, you just about lost your ball. I did. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, Crosstown Beano. <laughs> yeah. 
you're the you're the the celebrity on our on our podcast now here on Mixer. I don't know about that. I, you guys think I got more celebrity, celebrity than I do? Crosstown Bino, how are you? I'm all right. You all right? I got I you know I got I got a couple things going, but I, I'm all right. A couple okay. running. It doesn't sound like I've had as bad a day as you did the other day, and as bad a day as Beck has had. Oh yeah, fucking try me. It's been a real. It's been a bad day. All I've done is mope around in the depressed fog all day, eating carbs. <gasps> you ate carbs today? Ate carbs? Yeah, because last wow. last night I was so drunk I had to eat cheese sticks. <laughs> oh Cause, damn! Because you're because you're a gay mouse. <laughs> gay gals. Cheese, di- yes. cheese dick. Cheese dick. <laughs> 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 cheese dick. <laughs> and you know that I'm a gay mouse. <laughs> <laughs> So speaking of too much drinking, uh, Monday night we were at another bar, uh, and this is it's a sports bar. It's where we go to eat chicken wings Mondays a lot, and uh, it's it's not you know it's it's not really that hipster kind of crowd like you get in the downtown Knoxville area. It's right. just more like normal people. Yeah, it's the uh, people. Yeah, it's the strip mall crowd. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good that's a good way to yeah. <laughs> But, it is, it's it's what is it blue chips is that what it's called yeah yeah yeah, blue yeah. Chips. yeah. and uh the only reason we we're there is because i spent all my money and i can get a lot there cheaply yeah. <laughs> so, and uh you're sitting there and a group of hipsters does walk in it's uh-huh. like four of them and immediately i saw them and they came and sat down next to right next to our table at that low table so they were like a foot away from us right next to us uh-huh. and i was just like so the song i was like they they do not they rock, walked into the wrong bar. Yeah. What are they? Yeah. This is not for them. <laughs> but at some point, we're sitting there, and I wish Patrick was. Of course, again, I wish Patrick was here. He could talk about this thing he was at. Uh, but at some point, one of the dudes starts talking about. He starts talking about the Elon Musk Joe Rogan uh, interview, mm-hmm. and he's just like, "Oh, it was really cool," and he's just going on about it. And two of the other people are really into it too. And I kind of just half heard, I wasn't really paying attention to it. I just heard that they were into it. Mm -hmm. Well, then those three people got up and they like went to the bar and I think they started playing darts or something. And then there was this one girl that was sitting right next to me and she was just sitting there by herself smoking. And not long later, just naturally, we ended up start talking about Elon Musk. As one does. Yeah. Yeah. As one does. He's just (laughs) that kind of guy. He's everywhere. Yeah, and <laughs> and she leans over and she's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry about that." And we're just like, "I just like, what are you talking about?" She's like, "They were my fr- I'm sorry for my friends. They were uh, how they were talking about Elon Musk." And and I was just like, and I was like, "Well, we we weren't really talking about that. It was just it just came up." It in probably it, yeah, it probably well, it could have. Could have just but somebody overheard, you know, and it kind of put the idea in their brain, sure. But it, that why but, why the apology though? Well, right. I wasn't sure what she was apologizing for. That was the thing, and I was like, what? I forget what I said. I was just like, well, what's the problem? And she's just like, I don't, you know, I don't get what. Why are you? Yeah, why are you apologizing? Did she? Could you like, hear oh. what they were saying at all, or just that? No, they it were was just talking positive. About? Oh, it was cool. It was cool. Oh, I okay. heard some cool shit, basically. Okay. And then she's like, oh, never. Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. And then, but then I was like, basically she, she turns to us and then she's like, I just think he's a piece of shit. Oh. <laughs> she literally, when her friends left and she thought we were talking shit about them because apparently she thought we also thought he was a piece of shit. Yeah. She then shit talked her friends to say, I just basically to let us know she wasn't one of those people that liked Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> she said he was a piece of shit and that he doesn't pay his employees right. What the fuck does she know? <laughs> I know. That's what, and I was like, I mean, I've heard criticisms of him, you know, like the shit going on with Tesla. And that was some of what we were talking about, like yeah. stock, stocks and stuff. And he's being sued for that. And yeah. There's shit going on with that. But I've never heard that. And, and then late, I didn't say this then, but. Because she, she literally said, I think he's a piece of shit. And then she completely turned away and ignored us. <laughs> and then she ended up getting away. And I was just, I just turned to everybody. I was like, man, oh. she was stuck up, bitch. What's she? <laughs> I think she's a piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. And, but, ju- but I, I started to think 
I don't even think she was thinking of Elon Musk. I think she was thinking of Jeff Bezos because of all the shit right now, all the criticism he's getting for how Amazon employees get paid. Uh, well, I, it, it's hard. It's really hard to say because it, it, stuff's always coming out about Tesla employees don't get paid enough and SpaceX employees don't get paid enough. But it's it's always like it, the squeaky squeaky wheel gets the grease kind of thing. Like you, and and the negative voices tend to be louder than the the ones that are just chugging along happy with their jobs. But you know, every time one of those articles comes out about you know the the work uh, the work environment and and what the employees have to go through, another thing will come out like hey, well, here's an interview with some other employees that actually like their job and believe in the mission and stuff. And yet, I think no matter where you go, even with a company that's like all about, uh, you know, renewable energy and saving the planet, not everybody that gets a job there got the job because they're, that they, they are in agreement with that, that way of thinking, you know? Some of them are just like, it's a job. And then they're going to bitch because they don't get paid enough because they're, you know, maybe they don't see the benefit. Um, but as far as I understand, everybody that gets a job at SpaceX, especially it, it's like they, they have to express that they, f they feel the mission. Like they're into the mission of making life multiplanetary. And then, yeah, they, you know, I mean, they don't care about the pay. And the, part of the reason that they don't pay as much is also the same reason that their rockets are cheaper. Yeah. You know, they've got like six or seven thousand employees now. So, OK, if you pay them, you know, 10 grand or 20 grand less than other uh, other organizations, then you're going to save a lot of money. That's I don't know if it's that, that much less. You know, I mean, I can't I can't imagine that it is but that's one of those things that always gets me is and i get i get complaining about work conditions like if you if you're at a job and like you get treated like shit and you gotta put up with some crazy stuff i get that but everybody just jumping on a bandwagon and saying well these people don't get paid enough it's like if you don't get paid enough get a different get job a different job and and you that's know I, way it hurts. I don't i don't know why i haven't already said this but I run into these guys all the time. Brad runs into these guys all the time. Mm -hmm. The guys that work for, for SpaceX, they seem to be pretty happy with their job. Everyone that, you know, if I'm, oh, you work for SpaceX? Oh, man, that's really cool. I'm really into what you guys do. They're like, oh, thanks, man. You know, it's really awesome. And, some, you know, sometimes that's all it is. Sometimes we have a conversation. There's one guy that I deliver to almost once a week, and now we recognize each other, and, and we always – talk shop every time I deliver to him you know oh man you got this launch coming up oh what are you doing out there at the pad and blah 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 you know and he's really excited about his job and that's been everybody I have not talked to any SpaceX employee the only ones that I've talked to that are maybe just kind of like neutral about it aren't actually SpaceX employees they're contractors that w were hired to like work on the pads or something like when they were rebuilding the pad that they blew up you know you've got guys like welders that were brought in because they're really good at their job. And they're like, yeah, you know, yeah, SpaceX, cool, whatever. It's a paycheck to them. But the people that actually work there seem to really like their job. I think that a reporter can find somebody within a company that doesn't like their job, and then they can make an uh, article about it and generalize it as if it's everybody. Yeah, and it's, it's very easy to hate the, the billionaire that's everybody like, seems to like. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's easy. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, since we're talking about that, uh, we do have a voicemail that has to do with one Mr. Musk. Mr. Musk. Mr. Mr. Musk. Musk. So let's see. Let's let's hope this uh, plays without any technical issues. Hello, it's Jerry. It's been a minute. Uh, so Elon Musk and his security clearance. It may not seem like a big deal because he's not actually flying the rockets or anything like that. And he does know things that he just kind of learned having a security clearance. And by him using a federally prohibited substance, even though it is legal in California, it is federally prohibited 
he is violating his contract with the government and putting his security clearance at risk. And people have been kicked out of the military for less. And also, your game reasons to have a gun starts with why. The only correct answer is why the fuck not. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, Jerry. Touche, Jerry. Well, thanks, Grandpa Jerry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there have been, well, not, I wouldn't even call them developments, but uh, there have there is a conflicting article out there. It's not conflicting a lot, but okay. So CNBC and I think it was Fox Business that reported on uh, supposedly uh, the Air Force was investigating, you know, Elon Musk's marijuana usage, um, and apparently they jumped the gun because. The Verge got in touch with someone. Of course, they're not naming their source. It's a, it's an official with the Air Force. So you could take this with the exact same grain of salt that you take the other articles. Um, but this is what an Air Force spokesperson told The Verge. It's inaccurate that there is an esti- investigation. We'll need time to determine the facts and the appropriate process to handle the situation. And it goes on to explain that, yeah, it was Fox Business's uh, Charles Gasparino tweeted that the U.S. Air Force had begun to look into Elon Musk's smoking, and then a story by NBC followed. It seems that the initial report surfaced simply because Gasparino had asked the office about it in the first place, and the Air Force suggested it would follow up with the inquiry. Uh, the yeah, story grew yeah. from there, and now it appears the Air Force is going to spend its weekend, like the rest of us, overthinking a billionaire taking one week puff off a joint. Week. Week. So by yeah, by posing the question, they created their own story. Exactly. They created the story. Yeah. That is how so much of that shit works. And uh, <laughs> you know, Gas, Reno's full of hot air. And um, while I was, I was actually, I read that article shortly after it came out and i was trying to find it and while i was looking for it uh i I read something else that just made the suggestion like well maybe the air force isn't like maybe they're trying to decide how to handle civilians with security clearance that are found to have done some substance especially something as stupid as marijuana you know like i know you can get kicked out of the military for it but when you're the CEO of a company that's providing very affordable launches for your payloads, um, you might get a little leniency or also the fact that it was just marijuana and it was it, it wasn't inhaled. It, it, it was they can't it, prove it, that. It, yeah, they can't prove whether it was or wasn't. Yeah, he just does a Bill Clinton line. I, I, yeah, I, I didn't mean, inhale. Yeah. Unless they gave him a drug test within however many days after the video my i'll say my prediction they should send jerry to give elon musk a drug test he's in the military he could do it yeah my (laughs) my prediction is that nothing will come of it and the air force doesn't actually care yeah that's what i I mean i know and i hear you jerry i hear what you said and i know you know that it's it's it is a big deal in in terms of like policy within the military but everybody knows that it's not a big deal, and and Elon Musk taking a hit off a joint is not gonna uh, is not gonna endanger your launch in any way. In fact, but I mean he's dropped. Yeah, but huh? rules, rules are rules, though. And especially the in the military, right? And so I do understand that they could be like, "Look, this is our rule, and you know we don't make a habit out of bending our own rules. That's why we're the military." The rules are rules until you're involving billions of dollars, and right, right. <laughs> then the rules get bent. Right, and the Air They're Force best. Air Force uh, knows how much money they save by using SpaceX over ULA. It's a lot. It's a lot of money. Yeah, but I just, I mean, how can you have respect for somebody who can bend the rules on a situation where it can so obviously be proven that the rules were bent easily, because. You, sometimes you have to bend the rules. Sometimes bending the rules is a smart thing to do. Sometimes rules are stupid. Sometimes you can skirt them. <laughs> well, it's the same way that we bend the rules on the fact that 
marijuana is federally illegal, yet there are these states where it's legal and nobody's busting down doors. Here's yeah. Here's the thing. It's like <clears throat> I could. Here's a good, here's an analogy, um, or not really an analogy, an example. Like go back to beginning of the you know the so-called war on terror and the whole debate around torture and waterboarding and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And and I think it's a good argument to say that we want those things to be illegal. We don't, as America, we don't want to promote the idea of torture, and we're going to have policies in place that say we don't do these things but then you have the person the people that are pro-torture that go well what if what if uh, there's a bomb in the you know and your kids in the in the school and and you got one guy that knows and you got to get the information out right now all we got to do is peel his fingernails back one at a time let's put aside the fact that that's never actually happened but let's say it did the thing is you set the rule and then if a crazy situation like that does happen you somebody breaks a rule and then later on you're going to give them a slap on the wrist because nobody's then that's it like and you know what i mean like you have some some fucking cia agent or whoever that ends up having to do this thing and it ends up saving thousands of lives Mm -hmm. nobody's gonna fucking throw that want to throw that guy in prison exactly he might have broken the rule he might have bent the rule or whatever to get what needs to be done done so it's like it's it's this, it's this sort of thing where we have this is our s- true stated position, but leaving open the fact that you know one day maybe it did happen and nobody's gonna nobody's gonna throw that person to the wolves because they end up having to do this thing. And don't people sometimes get off on charges because of public outcry? Isn't that a thing that happens sometimes? Well, yeah. I know I sure do. <laughs> 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 all the time <laughs> well yeah i mean pre- and there's presidential pardons i mean right yeah how do they just change the fucking rules well, fucking- they, which might be what they maybe that's what this is going to do they're gonna be like well this is kind of silly that a civilian that that has this security clearance that isn't he's not a part of the military and what he what he's doing is not impacting the job that he's doing and actually, uh, the, it was in it was in the other article, and I don't have it up here, but it was, uh, the it was the guy that oversees those kinds of things, like if like drug testing and stuff like that. And he's like, he's like, honestly, if if I find out that somebody has smoked weed away from base and they're on leave, then I I really don't see it as a big deal, as long as they understand that that can't be done while you're on the clock basically well yeah i agree that yeah these these rules could be could be changed and probably be we make the rules depends on what they human are human beings are the ones that make the it's there's depends not on. some higher thing that's over us and it's like these are the rules and you can't change them we make right. the rules <laughs> it depends it just depends on what situation you're talking about because basically certain rules exist to keep certain dumber people in line in a very strict way (laughs) (laughs) i'm serious i really am serious these hard rules exist to keep certain people in line whereas other people might they can look at it and go okay i understand why this is here and i can break this rule because i understand Mm -hmm. this and i'm not violating the spirit of this law Um, but you know there's a Rules have a really there's a gray areas. Of- I, I, the, everything is situational. Yep. If I, I think that's part, that's part of what judges do. You know, yeah, we have this rule that's that's cut and dry, but we can also take circumstances into account. You know, like you know, look at uh, self defense. You're not allowed to kill people, but guess what? You are allowed to if it's self-defense. Of course, that's a law now, but I bet there was a time that that was not a law. True. And they had to change the law to to make it more fair and make more sense. Mm-hmm. If you're about to get killed, you should be able to do whatever is necessary to save your life. Even if it means smoking a joint. Even then. <laughs> as long as you're not on the clock with the military. Right. I was driving into South Knoxville today, and I saw three guys walking 
down on the side of the road with rifles and shotguns. Cool. Just in hand. It was very odd. I mean, you see that out in the country and you see people in Hunter Orange, like they're obviously doing some hunting, but this was like getting close into town. <laughs> I just drove by and I was like, what the fuck? That's really weird. They're tracking a deer, bro. Yeah. Man. They just saw some droppings two blocks oh, back. Right into Vestal. Yeah. I'm a gun in Vestal. Vestal. It's not because I'm hunting deer. It's keep myself safe. It's with rabbit. So I saw something funny. Uh, I thought you guys would appreciate it. Uh, Funnier than three dudes carrying guns in South Knoxville? No way. <laughs> Make fun of what I said. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah, he's talking shit about. that. <laughs> now, I don't know if this guy actually did this or he's just a shit up, just shit up, a setup for a joke. But he says this is a guy on Twitter named Keaton Patty. Patty, Patty, P A T T I. I forced a bot, huh? What? Patty. I forced a bot to watch over 1,000 hours of Trump rallies and then asked it to write a Trump rally of its own. Yeah. Wait, have you seen this? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, has everybody seen this? No, you already, I've not. Yeah, I, 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 read, I, I didn't retweet it, but I liked it. Well, tell me like I haven't heard about it because I, I haven't. I want heard to read it because it. it's really funny. I don't know, you know, I don't know if he actually did the bot thing or he just wrote this out, but bot as in like a a physical robot or like a what no, kind of bot. like a it's on a computer bot. screen? Yeah, yeah like, like a, a chat bot gotcha, or a yeah, okay, bot gotcha, or gotcha, gotcha. A script, basically. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh we're at the Trump rally intro at a big Arby's in South Wyoming, Oklahoma. <laughs> President Trump forces himself on a podium. <laughs> President Trump, I just had a phone call with the economy. Jobs pulled out of the phone. Great jobs. Trump jobs. Steve Jobs. All at Kinko's. <laughs> the crowd cheers. It is full of real Americans. Man with hard hat. Man with harder hat. <coughs> Gun that is alive. <laughs> <laughs> President Trump continues. The United Snakes is doing so good. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Okay, wait. Okay, start over. <laughs> <laughs> the, United the United Snakes. Snakes is doing so good. <laughs> Other countries are on fire. All the people on fire. Hot fire, too. Not us. Our flag is so beautiful. <laughs> President Trump salutes a flag that says, Arby's food is fine to eat. <laughs> This bot or this guy's a genius. Uh, the crowd howls. They love this flag of America. <laughs> <laughs> President Trump continues. I signed a bill. No more swamp. Swamp gone. Swamp is in Mexico now. It's on fire. Great deal for us. <laughs> the United Snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the, the crowd chants four more swaps four <laughs> more swaps <laughs> President Trump continues Ford powers cheat us Canada steals our milk <laughs> China <laughs> China steals our milk we only have one glass of milk left <laughs> Obama drank it not fair <laughs> <laughs> the crowd booze they wanted that milk <laughs> <laughs> wow okay so it's not even it's not it's not like word salad it's it's actually stringing ideas sentences together <laughs> some <laughs> things are being struck together president trump did use but like president ronald rogan <laughs> i'm gonna <laughs> up the milk Oh my god. 
the, the crowd roars, roars. They still want that milk. <laughs> oh my god! Still with the milk. <laughs> oh my god! A wall of milk. No criminals get through. Democrats want criminals to have the milk. No way. Milk comes from coal. We'll dig it up. <laughs> All of the words are mispronounced. The crowd cheers. They hate pronunciations. They love milk. They start digging. <laughs> to find the milk in the coal. In the coal. That's ridiculous. I think, I think that dude wrote that. I think that's really hilarious. Yeah. That, that it does kind of sound... Oh, man. Sounds that, but it's, it's, still, it's still brilliant. I don't care. I don't care if he did write it. I mean, United Snakes. United Snakes, though, man. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's Little League team or, I mean, I, don't I mean, but that does seem like a mistake that a bot might make because I'm assuming that it's, it's listening, it's watching and, and listening to these, and yeah, when someone says United States of America, and there's other sound and stuff, I could see a computer maybe thinking that it's saying United Snakes. <laughs> or Ronald Rogaine. Ronald. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, the name, the name of the episode is United Snakes of Ronald Rogaine. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, <man. sighs> Dave, I don't know if you remember what your topic was last week, but I challenged myself because you were like, ah, Steve will probably won't even have it next week. And I was like, I'm going to have it. <laughs> he probably doesn't remember. Dave, what, what was it? Let's well, hear your other topic. Do you remember what your other topic was? I'll share it. I'll share yeah, it. Oh. <laughs> remember this guy? Yeah, <laughs> baby. Oh. That's it. That's the one. Do you want me to bring it? you want to read it? I mean, I don't know. Do you guys want to talk about United Snakes some more? Talk about what? United Snakes. United Snakes. So, <clears throat> these aren't snakes. They're mosquitoes. Hmm. It's an ugly-looking red mosquito. Oh, it's, it's better. And and this is... this is uh, So, on Wednesday, whatever that means... It's a day of oh, the whatever week. Whatever that means. Looking for a date on here. So let's say and on a Wednesday in the past, <laughs> uh, research has announced that they'd gotten the go-ahead from the government of Burkina Faso. That's a place. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to release genetically engineered mosquitoes into the wild. Dun, dun, awesome. Dun. I like it so far. All right. The move is part of a long-term plan to eradicate a malaria-transmitting species. This will be the first release of any genetically modified animals into the African wild. Genetically modified mosquitoes have been released in the wild elsewhere. Yeah, didn't they do that in Florida? I don't know. They did. I thought there, yeah. was, there was a thing like... It was something like the scientific community agreed that if we eradicated the mosquito, nothing would die. Like no, it would not, it, it, it wouldn't like be a domino effect that would, you know, affect tons of other species. Uh, I don't know. And that mosquito that, mites have a problem with that. What? Mosquito mites. Mosquito mites. Oh, I thought you said mosquito mice. <laughs> like all these fucking mosquitoes. I, th I, thought you were, I thought you were trying to say mosquitoes might have a problem with it. <laughs> Well, they might, but so, but there was a thing like they were going to try to uh, genetically modify some mosquitoes to be sterile and put them out, and then it was going to somehow, you know, they breed and and then they breed well, more. That's the same philosophy here. The Melvin malaria malaria spreads when parasites infect mosquitoes, and those insects then transmit it to humans. So according to the Centers for Disease Control. 45,000, 445,000 people died from malaria in 2016. That's actually a lot. Yeah. I don't know, but from the popular, well, no, that's pretty high. How many? 445,000. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's and, quite a bit of people. And most of those were children in Africa. If we get rid of that particular type of mosquito, 
or at least decrease its numbers, we should be able to reduce the number of malaria cases and deaths. Um, so, so they're going to release them. Let's see. The ultimate goal is if they're able to meet the goal, researchers in Burkina Faso plus the African nation Mali and Uganda hope to later release gene drive mosquitoes into the wild. Unlike the mosquitoes approved by Bur Burkinabi government, those mosquitoes will have been genetically altered to carry mutations intended to thin the population that they'll pass down to all of their offsprings. Mm. I don't know, man. But the gene drive. It's very risky if the release of these genetically modified sterile mosquitoes produces some unforeseen consequences. Yeah. Yeah, Biden stuff and then yeah. some other stuff happens and then you got fucking zombies. Yeah. Basically, one step to zombies. So, so, yeah, and, and it goes on here. It says, once we release gene drive mosquitoes into the wild, though, we don't really have an undo button. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> How are you going to do? Uh, look, whistle. <laughs> Come on back, mosquitoes. So, they're just waiting, but it's happening. They're, they're they releasing. are going to do it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. As of Wednesday. Well, they I just don't. <laughs> Whatever that was. They eradicated malaria in other places in the world. I don't know why. Why? Why do they need to use fucking Franken mosquito to do it? Like, Probably because there's a lot less infrastructure to to do the eradication. I would think. You know, people are more spread out. That you know have, you know, don't I, I don't know don't have like they live in villages and stuff. You know, is, is are the people that I'm assuming that that we're concerned oh, about, okay. right? There's, there's huge towns over there. I mean, I mean, yeah, of course there are, but I'm uh, like, it seems like the infrastructure is not there to do this eradication. I'm assuming the eradication takes a lot of work and a lot of, uh, uh, I don't like a lot of follow up. Like you can't just, you know, go into a village, give everyone a shot, and it's done. It, I would assume that there'd be more to it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what involves. I know. I mean, I know the South U.S. used to have malaria, and that's been. We still got a fuckload of mosquitoes, but we got rid of malaria. I don't know how oh, they did. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Why is that then? I mean, I that's a good point. Maybe it is just a matter of shots. But if it was, wouldn't you think it would that that would be easier than genetically engineered? Uh, maybe not, because I mean, if you if you put out a a swarm of mosquitoes they're going to multiply right are what are, are these are, are they sterile i, I thought uh, that was the next thing the gene drive ones go ahead and you can look at you got it up there i mean yeah i do i just don't know if i can oh it's i guess it's not that long but oh yeah the gene oh later release the gene drive mosquitoes okay so these these ones the malaria free ones aren't aren't the uh the ones that are supposed to be sterile yeah no the the they're just talking. Look, look what I just did. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah. So you put out a swarm of mosquitoes, and they'll multiply over time, and it's it's probably a lot easier than. Than going around. I mean, you know, shots have a cost. You know, even if. Even if you just pay what it takes to to make those shots it still has a significant cost and getting to everybody would be more difficult than just putting out this swarm if this swarm is able to multiply and cover the you know I don't know, yeah all those countries I, I and continent you know the whole continent i would think I that'd be more effective article lacked was a time frame when does it plan on getting this accomplished yeah it's it's actually kind of short and it doesn't really give you much information it's like it gives you just enough to wonder <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that it probably costs a pretty penny to genetically engineer any living yeah, and a organism. Dirt That's true. So, yeah, the the research that went into it. And giving or receiving malaria shots is probably not even half as fun as releasing genetically engineered mosquitoes. <laughs> I, I can see that. Yeah. So here's what here's what they actually did. This is how the U.S. did it. During the CDC's first few years, this was in the uh, 1940s, mid-40s, 
more than six and a half million homes were sprayed with DDT. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when? When, when was it? That ended up. DDT was applied to the interior surfaces of your rural homes or entire premises and counties from Larry was reported to have been prevalent in recent years. In addition, wetland drainage, removal of mosquito breeding sites, and DDT spraying occasionally from aircraft <laughs> were all pursued. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> so hey, yeah, we got rid of malaria, but we gave like 10 million people cancer. <laughs> basically... But we eradicated it, buddy. Man, I remember when when I lived in Montana, which was like in the like 96 to or 93 to 96, maybe 97 time frame. I remember having planes flying over that were spraying for mosquitoes in our town. Oh yeah. We had a river that we have a, we had a river that came through and part of that river kind of over overflowed into this, like almost like a marsh kind of kind of area where it was just low lying still water. And, and yeah, they would come over and yeah, they'd, they'd spray us. Fucking spray our asses from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you feel comfy. Yeah. What can do there? All right, so maybe that's why we have some engineered mosquitoes. Yeah. I have another thing to talk about, but I don't have a link for you. I, 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 and it was because we were talking about the Fallout 76 before the show, and you, you were saying, you know, don't pre-order it. That game's going to be crap. Or it might. I mean, it might be. You don't know. Oh, I know. Yeah, you said might. But I read another news article this week. Fallout 76 aims to last until the end of time. <laughs> yeah so, so oh, like it's like it'll just get updates they'll never make another one that's what he's saying i'm um, sure they'll make other fallouts right just uh yeah this is its own thing yeah definitely so but yeah they pete hines they interviewed pete hines and uh he was he was saying that this is uh multiplayer focused uh and because it's gonna be online uh it's a games as a service model. So, yeah. Okay, so, but What's how long mean? will it last? And according to Beth, there's a marketing Pete Hines until the end of time. I, know, I mean, that's a, it's kind of crazy. Uh, I think, yeah, I think he's just selling it. Games well, as a service <clears throat> is just like what we were talking about with GTA Online or Destiny or, I mean, they're milking the customer. Yeah. Taking the milk, all the milk, all the milk, <laughs> all time. They got all the milk from the coal. Now they gotta get it from their customers. Well, this is what he says. So uh, part of the reason Hines said he believes this is possible is because other Bethesda games like Fallout Four and Skyrim have remained incredibly popular years after launch, and those titles didn't have as much of an online focus as Fallout Seventy Six. Um, and then uh. So is the timeline two years or five years? And Heinz says, well, they're still playing Morrowind. And you go online and you look at how many people are playing Fallout 4 and Skyrim. Those games have been out for four and seven years. And there are literally hundreds of thousands of people playing those games every single day, every single month. So it, he says, so Fallout 76, our timeline is in perpetuity. That's very optimistic. Very optimistic. <laughs> so there you have it. I mean, it, I don't want to read the whole damn thing, but he continues to go on and 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 say why he thinks it's going to last and the content that they're going to bring out and and still put out and uh, a lot of it's going to be free. So What's for all the game nuts out there, <laughs> all you game nuts out hey, there, game nuts. Ah. Well, that's basically our podcast, right? It's just in perpetuity. It's yeah. just going to the podcast as a service. It's that's just right. going on forever. Yeah. It's a free service. And it goes on forever. And it goes on. And it's game nuts. Yeah. In fuego huevos. In fuego huevos. <laughs> My balls. My balls on are on fire. fire. Eggs? Oh, I thought it was balls. What'd oh. you say? Huevos? Yeah. That's, that's eggs, buddy. Well, what's but it's balls? slang for it yeah, be... isn't it slang for yeah. yeah? Don't people say huevos for balls? Yeah, that's what I always thought. That I mean, it means eggs. I've never said it. Wait, what's that? What's that? Yeah, Brenda's Spanish. She's in there behind the curtain. There you go. Yeah, see, 
take, but he's, take it from a man that's worked in a kitchen with Mexicans for a long time. Uh, that uh, huevos means eggs, but eggs means balls. Yeah. Interesting. That's coming from old Crack and Brad right there. Follow him on. Does that mean follow that... him on Mixer, Twitch, or whatever the fuck he's on. So Twitter. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Fertile <laughs> women have balls. Yep. Eggs yep. meet balls. That's right. Oh, that's right. So, so yeah. So every month you uh, drop your balls. Yeah. A, that A show ball. I saw last night, I saw a lot of middle-aged women with balls <laughs> on <What>? stage. <laughs> middle-aged women? With no, balls? there was no. It was yeah. There were. It was just a bunch of middle-aged dudes in dresses, just oh okay, sweating. Yeah. And and then the one guy in his like leather thong thing with like half of his nutsack hanging out. That's yeah. not a pretty picture. No. Oh, it was great. Did it you wasn't watch a the, pretty video. Did you watch it? <laughs> Dave, you got to go back and watch the Snapchat. It was a lot of fun. I don't have Dave's. I'm not. I don't have Dave's Snapchat. I can't send him all this good stuff. Oh, that must be by design. I guess so. What, Dave? What do you not want to see? Grown men's balls dancing around playing guitar. Not anymore. Fag. He's seen enough of that today. <laughs> I did. Swinging eggs. Enough huevos. Becca. Hi. I really hope you've been writing things down. Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, notepad. I'll say it because I see your notepad here. So you've got a. Well, I, I planned ahead. I brought a notebook, but then I saw this and I thought this will be my souvenir poem. I'll auction it off if anybody is interested. <laughs> Hey, Mixer, you guys interested out there? You want this impromptu pad? Oh, I hope it's not time for it because I ain't got shit yet. Oh. Is it time? What else do I ask about the poem then when it's time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm looking for an update. I just like... <laughs> How's that poem coming along? Just, okay, can I ask you guys? Okay, I just need one more sentence, all right? Right now, it literally makes no sense. So if you guys can just like say some shit. Uh, well, I got just... some shit. Let me. I'll say shit. some shit. Oh, I can. Got... I can say some shit because uh, SpaceX tweeted something very interesting last night. Um, they have booked their first commercial passenger to fly around the moon on the BFR, and come Monday, they're gonna give us a big update and i think it's going to be an update to the design i mean it, there it has been an update to the design um it looks a lot more like a space shuttle now oh, okay. um it's Is... got it's got three wings it's got two that are kind of angled down and then one dorsal wing so they're like they're evenly spaced you know like in a triangle and there, all we have to go by is this picture. And there's a lot of speculation online about, you know, what, you know, basically, what, what can we gather before this presentation? And it looks like the bottom two wings will like pivot so that, well, there's there's different aerodynamic reasons why you'd want to do that. But but we're focusing on the audio here, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But they have a passenger that has been booked, and they're going to tell us who it is and why they're going. On Monday does night. the person does the person know yet? Is that the big reveal? Could it be <laughs> just like anybody? Yeah, well, if you have a social security uh, number, you've already been entered into the drawing. Oh my God, I hope it's me. <laughs> uh, but somebody uh, jokingly responded to that tweet and said, "It's you, isn't it, Elon?" And then he responded with nothing but an emoji of a Japanese flag. Oh, hmm. that was his that was his response was a Japanese flag. Huh. So obviously it's there's speculation. Uh, Kobayashi, that guy that used to win all the hot dog eating competitions. There you go. <laughs> He's got enough money. Yeah, it's Yeah, it's going to be some some rich industrialist or something that yeah. is way into space. Well, you know, I I kind of think if if they're actually going to do a reveal of who it is and they're saying uh find out who it is and why they're going on monday blah 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 time i'm thinking that it's going to be somebody that is open to like 
promote this and kind of be a voice for it. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not just going to be some rich guy that that nobody it doesn't necessarily like being on TV or anything. It's it's going to be somebody that is comfortable with that sort of thing. <clears throat> some guy that's played a samurai in a movie or something. Mm. That'd be sweet. What's the uh, but, what's the name of the guy that created Mario? Oh, Shigeru Miyamoto. Yeah, maybe it's him. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. So I that's fucking it, it's cool. They've updated the design again, which kind of makes me nervous because I mean, it, you know, the clock's ticking. You know, they got to get yeah. building because supposedly they want to start flying this thing in 2022. Um, or that's when they want their first cargo mission to Mars to be. No people, but 2022, supposedly. I mean, and everybody knows that they don't make their timelines, but um, <laughs> they got to get going. But it's really exciting. And if you're into this shit, uh, it's Monday night. I, I think it, he, he said 9 p.m., and I'm assuming he's talking Pacific time. So that's midnight. Monday night, and it'll it will be on YouTube. It'll be on the SpaceX YouTube channel, or if you go to spacex.com/webcast, there's actually already a placeholder video that if you click on it, it it gives a countdown to the event. Um, but it's gonna be I'm sh assuming it's gonna be an update of the design, and God damn it, I hope it's the final update. Yeah, but the guy getting in it hopes so too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it hasn't changed all that much. The like is in terms of size, or well, it, uh, I mean, uh, there's nothing to reference it. But I'm I'm gonna assume because they already have tools to to build the cylinder that makes up the rocket. I'm gonna assume that they're gonna keep the diameter the same. So really, all they've done is they've repositioned the wings on it and some other stuff. There's other changes, but you know that's yeah, boring. There's a, <laughs> it's boring there's to a most people. Coffee maker in there and. Right, yeah. Some other stuff. Well, they figured out how to put a microwave in there, too. Mm -hmm. Space age technology. That's right. Becca, uh, I hope somebody said a sentence that you liked. Yeah, I got some good shit here. Oh, yeah. Works. A leak a minute ago. I love how you can just bring it all together. That's right. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so if you're ready for this, say... I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. I can't tell this part of the poem. Her asking the question. Me and Steve have planned this weeks in advance. Yeah, you're supposed to already be reading the poem while I'm going. We'll cancel each other out. The audio will cancel each other out. Yeah, you're right. All right, so this one is called, appropriately called, Word Salad. <laughs> I think this, I think you've had a poem named that before, but. <laughs> Way. Word Salad 2. Okay, Word Salad T-O-O. -O. Mm -hmm. It will come out eventually that you won't find milk in coal. But. If the community agreed to live as a model of focus, we can win the hot dog eating competitions. The clock is ticking. <laughs> nice. Yeah, very good. That's my vacation poem. It's a lot of fun. It was. It was <laughs> so much fun. That's the it's first of many. Alaya. You have uh, two more, don't you? Or just one more? Are you? One more. I know you're going to be here like for next episode but do you go home before the following episode yeah yeah my okay. my plane is a uh, thursday of the following week so gotcha i'm gonna i could probably do this again from another room in your house that's what when i was I'm there. thinking yeah that's what i was thinking we'd do but uh, as far as this goes this this poem was written and recorded in universal studios uh i'm gonna start the bidding for this notepad at uh how much was it? was $40 for parking here. Uh, I'm going to start the bidding at $4,000. All right. That's reasonable. Look for that All right. The, Get that, that tip jar eBay. set up there in yeah. the stream there, Steve-O. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just, I want, what about for the, the page behind it where it's like pressed down and you can kind of see what you wrote there? That's uh, $4,000 in pennies only. <laughs> <laughs> 
good. It's That's even good. It, okay. So it's more difficult to get the one that is Im- impressed from the sheet above it. Yeah. Yep. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, sounds good. Yeah, sounds reasonable to me. <laughs> Makes sense. Fancy that. Complete sense. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Haywood Banks, for our theme song. We still have a theme song, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Still a- I, I hope. You, I hope. Well, I guess Patrick will be able to at least put the theme song to the at the beginning of it, right? I mean, if he's filling up to the it, the audio. Ver- yeah. Hopefully, he can do at least that. Hopefully he'll for be us. recovered by Sunday. I'm, I'm really. <laughs> I'm really hoping he will be. I hope he'll he'll pull through. He'll drink some milk. He'll get some energy back from the coal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he gets for eating old egg salad sandwiches from glove compartments and used vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> he does do that a lot, actually. <laughs> oh, we learn more about Patrick when he's not here. <laughs> he just saw comes out. <laughs> And it's all true. We'll make up all kinds of shit. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, yeah. Give us likes. Uh, hope, hopefully, uh, people like us on Mixer. Oh, we're still going to post this on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. We're still, uh, yeah, I've been recording it to uh, oh. post it up. Uh, and if you're if you're listening and you're wondering why you didn't get a notification for the YouTube uh, stream, well, it's because we're doing Mixer now, and it's real easy to find. It's Mixer.com slash verbal assault podcast one word i don't Green think pastures we like it over here we're gonna try i don't think you need the caps but just in case you do i will mention it that the first letter of each word is capitalized but it's still one word verbal assault podcast I we can also uh, put a link to it in the on the the post right somebody can i can't i don't do that patrick can patrick can patrick do that <laughs> steve what's the phone number somebody can call us to leave us a message leave us a voicemail at 865-316-6955 oh each one is capitalized oh yeah, the first first number of each letter is capitalized okay but that's oh okay so 865 oh yeah. fuck you dave <laughs> 865. Well, that's a capital 8. 865. 316. 6955. Is that right? 129,600 right. minutes. Don't get started on that shit. Go. Just take it. Take it all the way. I'm going to get 525,000 moments so dear. Oh, God. 525,600 minutes. How do you measure? Measure a year. Take it away, Steve. 500,700 <laughs> minutes. Stop it. How do you <laughs> measure a seven minutes?